let me let me go back here. Sweeney, Hemsworth, Rabinowich, Singh, Kempner, Pritikin, Anderson, Randall, Barnard, Schulman, Walter Longo. The list goes on. The research is out there. We're talking about large-scale research more recently uh, over long periods of time. We're talking about metabolic ward studies. We're talking about studies like the CHIP program that are four weeks in duration simply by changing food towards a lower fat, more plant, whole food approach. We get it. You get it. It's perfectly straightforward. Here's the problem. In the, in the outside world, outside of Loma Linda University, when people go to the internet and they type in how to reverse diabetes, foods to eat for diabetes, they get hit with the exact opposite message. Yeah. They get hit with the low carbohydrate message, the ketogenic diet message. Yes. Don't eat carbohydrates, don't eat potato, don't eat rice, don't eat fruits, eat more meat, more protein rich foods, higher fat foods, have coconut oil, have olive oil. That's how you reverse diabetes. Why are people saying this? What is the problem? I don't know what the underlying motives may be. But I know one thing is for sure. That those people that usually treat diabetes, they're well-intentioned, they're well-trained physicians and healthcare professionals but they somehow have never quite gotten the nutritional concepts because they have not been exposed to these concepts. They have not made the distinction. Even the dietitians don't make the uh, distinction between refined complex carbohydrates and unrefined natural complex carbohydrates. They're totally different. And the magic here again has to be centered on the role that dietary fiber plays. The American diet, the standard American diet, the diet that we use even in treating diabetics, contains about 10 to 12 grams of fiber. When you increase the fiber to 30, 40, 50, 60 grams, as you find in countries where you don't have diabetes, the magic takes place. The trans Formation from complex carbohydrate from starch to sugar is delayed by about an hour to two hours. The body needs to first break this all down. And therefore, and in this situation, the body now can really uh, measure out how much insulin is really needed to meet the starch challenge. When you have a high starch challenge coming into the system in the form of that turns into fiber. I'm sorry, that turns into sugar. When you have a high starch, refined starch challenge coming to the system, that turns into sugar within 15, 20, 30 minutes. When you have a high starch challenge based on fiber rich complex carbohydrates, it takes about one to two hours. And the body has now enough time to, to measure out just about the right amount of insulin to open those cellular gates and things are beginning to purr. The fat inside the cells begins to drop out. The, the fat that people carry in terms of their overweight begins to become less and less. And within three to four days, the need for insulin, the need for medication is dramatically reduced because the insulin is becoming now more effectively doing its job again. That's the answer. Why don't we teach this? What really scares me is the whole concept that when we recommend these high, um, high protein diets, they're usually high fat diets, we actually promote renal disease. We promote kidney disease, which is already at a very high risk for the diabetic. We actually worsen the whole thing. So we need to really develop a new concept of the right diet. And the right diet should be a diet that is whole foods, plant-based by and large, that's naturally very high in fiber. We talked about 30, 40, 50 grams a day. Uh, that diminishes the amount of, uh, obviously, sugar and cholesterol. Because when you move towards plant-based diets, the cholesterol drops out too, right? 
right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Without, without question. No question about it. Yeah. So I mean, when you help the diabetic, you not only help the diabetic in terms of the diabetes condition, the high blood sugar, but you also take care of the complications of diabetes. Because a diabetic is at a high risk for all these atherosclerosis, blood vessel narrowing diseases such as blindness, hearing loss, memory loss, stroke, heart disease, impotence. They're all there because of the blood vessels becoming narrowed down by a diet that is not only high in sugar, but it's also high in animal products, which is high in cholesterol. And with these saturated fats, you're setting up the program for untold complications. And by making this one change, cut back on animal products, cut back on refined foods, but increase now the amount of foods as grown, foods as they come in nature. You not only take care of your blood sugars, but you also take care of the complications that relate to heart disease, impotence, hearing loss, eye problems, kidney disease. It's a win, win, win all the way. And you probably save money you probably reduce your food bill by 30, 40%. And you uh, probably uh, have um, probably shown some um, kindness to the animal world, right? 